I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Python on Snowflake playlist. And we're going to talk about transactions, which allow us to do a whole bunch of SQL statements together, and they execute all or none, meaning if there's any uh, error in any of the uh, SQL statements that are being processed, then all of them fail, um, and which is very, very useful for doing uh, transactions. And so we'll use the rollback command if we get an, if, if we get an error, and that's going to set everything back, and none of them are going to go through. So without further ado, let's get to our rollback using Python on Snowflake. Looking for your next gig? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description. Okay, so just like usual, I've got the default uh, installation of Python with some extras loaded in there, including the Snowflake connector. Um, I've installed the one that works with Pandas as well, so make sure that you uh, check that out in our earlier episodes. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I start a new uh, Python uh, script. And uh, actually, I think for this one, I only need the connector. I'll import Pandas if I'm going to grab some data later. I don't think I'm going to here. Um, so what I'll do is I'll uh, print opening uh, connection and uh, just to give some feedback and then we can go ahead and create our connection object uh, for Snowflake and uh, it'll go something like this. So some of the variables that I've created are actually uh, hidden up above. I've scrolled <laughs> up above there including the uh, snow user and snow, snow pass variables. Uh, but you will make your uh, Snowflake connector connection uh, using your username and password. I've, like I said, I've uh, scrolled those up so, so that you can't see them. And the account as well, I think I put up there. And uh, so I'll put snow account there. And then uh, now the warehouse, um, it's good to create your connections to point exactly where you're going to be working. Uh, in this case, we'll grab our, our project warehouse um, and then we'll specify the database uh, as the project database that we've been working on as well as the schema uh, which is the project schema and that'll sort of get us right exactly where we want to be where our tables are uh, so that we can get ready to do um, it, uh, transaction and the first thing I'm going to put together here is our cursor so we'll grab the uh, cursor as the connections cursor and uh, that's going to allow us to execute statements, individual statements, um, and uh, those uh, obviously we'll, we'll set up in a minute. Uh, but first we're going to create, we're going to start our try, accept, and finally block um, because we're going to be using that error handling capability uh, to, to do our transaction. And uh, inside of that, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a series of SQL strings here that are going to get executed all together. And so uh, we have a staff table, so I'm going to go ahead and create our staff ID, uh, last name, first name, and date of birth. And I'll go ahead and I'll assign some values to that as well, uh, building our SQL string. So I'll just add some values. I believe the next value in my table is uh, uh, 806. And then we'll add our name, uh, which will be Chang. Uh, we'll put Chang, we'll do Nancy Chang will be our, our staff member. Uh, so she's going to get added to our tables and we'll put in her date of birth as uh, 1984 um, and uh, say October uh, 2nd. And so uh, that'll create our insert string for the uh, staff table because we're going to insert into the staff table, into the project table, and then into the project staff table, which, which is a junction table. And uh, I guess I'll go up back up here and I'll, I'll give that a better descriptive name here. And so for our project uh, SQL string, uh, we'll do insert into project and uh, uh, project and then the project has an ID, a project name, and a project description. And we'll also add some values for those uh, here in a second. 
So we'll add project underscore name and uh, project underscore description. And, uh, and then we'll close off that line and uh, we'll add the values part of the string here. And uh, so we'll do values and then we'll add, uh, I think the next one in the list uh, is 9113. And then we'll do a new mansion project um, and which will be the name of our project and then we'll say create a create a mansion that should do it and um, and then we can close that string off and that's going to insert a row into our project table and then the next one that we want to do is we want to uh, insert a row into our junction table now if you're not familiar a junction table is what allows you to do a many-to-many -many relationship and so you can't really have values in your junction table um, because it's going to say this staff member worked on this project uh, or this project had these staff members. Uh, you can read it that way. And so you don't want to have any values in your junction table uh, that don't exist in the, uh, in the, in the one of the one-to-many side. So you have to have that staff there and that project also has to be there. And so uh, you want to make sure that uh, that that always happens and you also don't want to have any junk data in there and so we'll call our SQL junction uh, string here we'll we'll do the same thing as we did before it has the uh, ID a project ID and a staff ID which will be those numbers that we uh, just created up above there and so uh, when we run these strings it's going to run everything all together and that's what we want to that's what we want to see is that all three are successful and uh, or none of them are successful and uh, and so we can go ahead and do that we'll add our values I believe the next uh, project uh, staff availability for the ID is number five so we'll go five and then our 9113 and 806 just like we saw there and then we'll say the start of that assignment to that person was on April it will be on April 4th 4th uh, or pardon me April 6th and so um, and so that sort of closes off those that's all of our SQL strings and so now inside of our try uh, part of the block here we can uh, execute all of those strings and that's what we want to do next so to do that we will go ahead and we'll uh, use our cs.execute so that's our cursor uh, which allows us to execute that SQL string and uh, so uh, we can use that uh, for all three in a row uh, we could obviously have just put the SQL string directly in there however I find it's uh, neater and easier to read if you have them all separated and then when you go to actually execute it you can have a nice little set of commands like you see here so we're going to go execute SQL staff, execute SQL project, execute SQL junction, and then we're going to commit that, um, that set of uh, uh, commands so, the, uh, so that the data is actually written to the database. And I believe the, uh, the default is auto commit equals false, but I'll, I'll put it in here um, uh, explicitly into our connection so that none of those commands will be finalized or written in the database unless we explicitly tell it to commit those changes. And so what we can do from there is we can add our accept part of our um, try accept uh, block here and we can say uh, accept exception as E so it's going to capture that uh, that error and and we'll use a connection dot rollback and then we'll raise the error we'll we'll show it in our uh, console output and then we'll use the finally part of our of our block to uh, basically execute something whether or not it's successful and that's what we want is we want that finally in there um, uh, which will execute uh, regardless of whether there's an error we want to make sure that connection gets closed and so we'll also put an operation completed in there uh, whether or not it had errors so it'll show that it has errors if it actually got errors and we'll hit F5 and see what we get here. So we open connection and uh, we can see uh, it takes a minute to reach out to Snowflake and there you can see the operation completed. So that means we didn't get any errors because the, we didn't see any errors on screen here. And if I grab our Snowflake um, 
uh, worksheet from our worksheet uh, online, and I run uh, these queries, I can see uh, order by ID descending. You can see Nancy Chang got created. If I run the project here, you can see the new mansion project got created. And if I uh, look at the project staff junction table, you can also see that the, uh, the uh, assignments got created there. And so that was a successful um, you know, uh, execution with a commit at the end. And so all of those changes were written to the database. But what if we have an error? And in some cases, you might have an error uh, related to, um, it could be a constraint or anything to do with just about anything. Is if there's any error at all, uh, all of these statements are going to fail. Um, and none of them are going to be committed to the database. And that's what we want. Um, but if we have some kind of problems, so I'll change our actors here. And so this time we're going to insert Hans Schmidt into our staff table. We're going to create project 9114, which will be a cranberry farm, I guess. And uh, for juice, we'll, we'll make a, say a cranberry farm for creating juice. I don't know, anything. Um, so we'll say for juice in here. And then we're going to change our uh, project staff um, table to use our new, uh, our new uh, actors here. So we'll change it to 9114. And we'll change it to 807 for the insert, or pardon me, we'll change it to ABC this time. Um, because what we're going to do is we're going to cause it to fail. So in this case, we're going to try to insert a string into our table that has an integer column. And, and we'll see what happens when we run that. So it reaches out and uh, we can see it's opening the connection. And it kind of sits for a minute and then... Uh, we should get an error here and it's taking quite a while. You can see, okay, so it finally threw that error. And so now you can see um, it threw the error and uh, you can see ABC is not recognized as a numeric value. And so if we go, if we go back here and if I go and grab that data, um, if I look at those same queries, now I could look at the same uh, query. So I'll look at the staff table and I'll uh, execute that. You can see that Hans Schmidt did not get created, even though that was a it was a valid insert. Same with the uh, the cranberry farm; um, it was a valid insert as well. Uh, but the last one in the project staff table, it did not get inserted, um, and and it was because the ABC is not an integer, which is the wrong data type for that column. So. That means I have to go back to our, our last um, insert statement and change that to a valid integer. And then I can hit F5. And as you can see, it opens a connection. And uh, there you can see, OK, it's uh, operation completed. And we did not get an error. So in this case, our transaction was successful. So if I go back to our staff table and I hit uh, run on that one. You can see Hans Schmidt got created there, which is what we wanted to see. The project Cranberry Farm got created there, which is what we also wanted to see. And the assignment uh, of uh, Hans Schmidt on 9114 and 807 got created there. And that is exactly what we wanted to see. And so you can imagine just how important transactions can become uh, when you want to insert a whole bunch of dependent data data that depends on each one being each successful insertion or update or whatever, uh, you want to make sure that those all go together or none go at all. And that is how you can do transactions with roll, rollback using Python on Snowflake. Need help coaching on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to use transactions in Snowflake using Python. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, click the bell when you see the bell. And if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.